All right, what we're going to do in this tutorial is we are going to solve two different word problems by setting up an algebraic equation to solve. So this first problem reads that two cities are located 315 miles away from each other. A car leaves one city traveling towards the second city at 50 miles per hour. At the same time, a truck leaves the second city bound for the first city at 55 miles per hour. How long will it take the car and the bus to meet? Now, the first thing that I like to do when reading a word problem is I like to figure out exactly what are we looking for. Well, the question being asked is, how long will it take the car and the bus to meet? Now, by how long, they don't mean a length. They mean a length of time. So what we're looking for in this problem is how many hours will pass before the car will meet up with the truck if they are moving towards each other. So once you have determined what it is you're looking for, then declare a variable that will represent what you're looking for. And because we're looking for hours, I know we are going to solve for h. Now, after declaring your variable to represent what you're looking for, if you're not sure how to set up the problem, just try to figure out what kind of information that you just know, like just state some facts algebraically. Like for example, it says that one car is traveling at 50 miles per hour. So if it is going 50 miles per hour, that means if we were to multiply 50 by the number of hours traveled, that would give us a total distance that that car traveled. So if H was equal to one hour, that car will have traveled 50 miles. If it travels two hours, that would be 100 miles. And the same thing is true for the truck. The truck is traveling at 55 miles per hour. So if it traveled one hour, then that would be one times 55 for a total distance of 55 miles. Or let's say this H was two hours, that would be a total of 110 miles. Okay, let's try to visualize this problem really quick. Now the problem says that there are two cities involved. Let's just call those cities city A and city B. And in the first city, the car is traveling towards the second city at a rate of speed that is 50 miles per hour. And starting at city B, the truck is traveling towards city A at a rate of speed that is 55 miles per hour. Now, we can see that the truck is traveling faster than the car. But at some point, these two vehicles are going to meet up with each other. Now, it wouldn't be exactly half the distance because the truck and the car are going at different speeds. Now, because the truck is going faster, that means it's going to travel a greater distance. So like maybe around this point or something like that, they'll meet. All right. Now, one thing we should be able to visualize here is this. No matter where the two vehicles meet up, the truck will have traveled a certain amount of distance and the car will have traveled a certain amount of distance. And whatever those two distances are, that distance that the car travels and the distance that the truck travels will be equal to the entire distance between city A and city B. And then entire distance is given in the problem. It is equal to 315 miles. So if we knew what the value of H is, which is the amount of time it takes the two vehicles to meet up, we would multiply that amount of time by 50 to figure out how far the car went. We would multiply that number by 55 to figure out how far the truck went. And then we would add those two values together for a total of 315 miles. So now we have an algebraic equation, which allows us to solve for H. So these two terms here are like terms. So let's combine 50H and 55H, which is a total of 105H, and that will be equal to 315 miles. Now, because the hours and the miles are being multiplied here, we have to do the inverse, which is to divide. So to get rid of this coefficient, we divide it by itself. And we have to balance our equation by dividing 315 by 105. So 105 divided by 105 is 1, which leaves us with 1h. And 315 divided by 105 is exactly 3. So these two vehicles will meet exactly 3 hours after leaving their respective cities. All right, let's go ahead and do another example. All right, this problem reads that a car traveled at an average rate of 50 miles per hour. After traveling for a while, the car reduced its average rate of speed to 
40 miles per hour for the rest of the trip. If the 220 mile trip took five hours, figure out how long the car traveled at each rate. All right, first let's determine what it is we're trying to find in this problem. Well, they want us to figure out how long the car traveled at each rate. And note that there are two rates given in the problem. The car is traveling at 50 miles an hour, and then it slows down to 40 miles per hour. And we have to figure out how long it was traveling at this speed and how long it was traveling at that speed. So we're actually trying to find two answers for this problem, which means we are going to have to set up two variables in our equation. So let's just use x and y. And we're going to let x equal how long the car was traveling at 50 miles per hour. And we're going to let y equal how long the car was traveling at 40 miles per hour. All right, now we know that if we took 50 miles and multiplied it by x, which is the total amount of time it is traveling at that speed, it would give us a total distance traveled. And we know that separately, if we multiplied 40 by y, which is how long it was traveling at that speed, it would give us a total distance traveled at that speed. And if we added those two results together, that would give us a total of 220 miles. Now, we cannot solve this equation as is because if you have two variables in a problem, you can't figure out the value of each one unless they were the same variable. So what we need is we need another equation so we can set up a system of equations. So we have to think, what is another piece of information given that will allow us to set up a second equation? Well, we know that x is a certain amount of time traveled at 50 miles per hour, and we know y is a certain amount of time traveled at 40 miles per hour. And if we knew those amounts of times, we know that for sure that they're going to add up for a total of five hours. Even though we don't know what each one of these is individually yet, we do know that the trip took a total of five hours. So what we have now is a system of equations, and that will allow us to actually figure out the value of one of our two variables. So let's go ahead and do this. I'm going to rewrite this equation and set it equal to x. And I'm going to do this simply by moving this y on the other side of my equation. So I'm going to write minus y on the left, and I'm going to write minus y on the right. So we can rewrite this equation as x is equal to 5 minus y. So we're saying that x is the same thing as 5 minus y, which means I could go into this equation up here, and I can substitute x with 5 minus y, since they are really the same thing. And then I just write the rest of this equation out here, plus 40y equals 220. Now, if you take a look here, we only have one variable in this equation, which is y. So we can actually solve for y to find out what y is equal to. So let's distribute the 50 to everything here in the parentheses. 50 times 5 is 250 minus 50 times y is 50y plus 40y equals 220. All right, we have two y terms here that we can combine. So we're going to write 250 minus 10y equals 220. And now we're going to take this 250 and move it over on the other side of the equation. So these 250s cancel out on the left, leaving us with negative 10y equals negative 30. And now to turn this coefficient into positive 1, we have to divide the coefficient by itself. So negative 10 divided by negative 10, that's positive 1. And negative 30 divided by negative 10 is positive 3. So now we know that y is equal to 3 hours. So at this point, we know that the car was traveling 40 miles an hour for 3 hours. So what we can do now is we can actually take this y here and substitute it with 3. So if we multiply 3 times 40, 
that will give us the total distance that the car traveled during those three hours. So if the car traveled a total distance of 120 miles during those three hours, that means that the car must have been traveling 50 miles an hour for two hours. And the reason for that is because 100 plus 120 is 220, which means this x here must be equal to 2 because 2 times 50 is 100. And now we know how long the car was traveling at 50 miles an hour and how long the car was traveling at 40 miles an hour. So we know that x is equal to 2. All right, I just want to say thanks for checking out this video. And please don't forget to subscribe to my channel so you can become informed as new videos become available.